Here we go. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of From Sunday to Sabbath. My name is Mike Scan. I'm the senior pastor of Epic Life Church in Carroll, Texas. We were once a Sunday church, but we have now converted over to the Sabbath. Come and join us on this Epic Life adventure. Discover the life that you were created to live. Real love, real people, real purpose. Discover the life of Aura. And I am so excited today. I thought I'd get a, a one out. I actually, I actually had an episode out. I, I really do. I'm going to a little confession, but I didn't like it. And so I deleted it. And I know many of you have been waiting for a new, um, a new episode to come out. And I want to talk today just real briefly. I'm not going to take a lot of your time, hopefully, but I want to talk about the importance of community. It's something that we've been talking about here. It's something I've been talking about to a lot of, uh, just a lot of our friends. Um, I just have to got off the phone. We got a lot of exciting things coming. Um, they're not here yet, but they are on the way. But I'm really stoked because of this particular topic. You know, there is a, I don't want to say a deception. Uh, I have talked about it before on the podcast, but there is this kind of misunderstanding when you get involved in Torah a lot of people, and there are a lot of people out there, people that are probably listening to this 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 today or later this week or next whatever, but you, you've kind of discovered Torah, you've learned this, kind of what we've talked about this Sunday to Sabbath, and what you have discovered is that you've been missing out. And one of the things that I find very interesting in our community is the number of people who are coming to the church because they just simply missed the community. And I think that's the whole, that's the whole point of Torah is, is look, when we began to change over and we begin to, you know, really have a hunger, um, to honor Yahweh with the full word Genesis to revelations. And we wanted to, you know, really the prayer became, you know, we just want to be, we want to be a mirror of what the kingdom of God's really going to be like the community. And I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to read some passages here in a minute, at least one. Um, but if you're not a part of a community and you're trying to do the Torah, this lifestyle by yourself, I'm going to tell you, man, it, it, it not only does it have a lot of hangups um, and it's missing so much. See, we weren't designed to do. I mean, think about it like this. You go back into Genesis, right? And when you look at Genesis, what do you see? You see Yahweh looking at man by himself, right? And what does he say? He doesn't say, man, he's going to do such a good job and he's not going to, man, he's going to do good. No, he said it's not good that man be alone. And so what does he do? He creates for us a helpmate, the woman, our wife so that we wouldn't be alone, so we wouldn't be doing it by ourselves, right? Go into Ecclesiastes. What does it say, right? Ecclesiastes says, uh, let me go ahead and see if I can pull it up here, you know, that, let's see here, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, what? One can help the other up. But pity on anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can you keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Right now, that was out of the New International Version. Not a fan, but it just was popped up real quick. I need to pull up my, let me pull this up here so that I have my, uh, my Bible up here and we can just show it off here and I can look it up for y'all. Okay. But yeah, guys, this is, this is so important. I mean, this really is that we learn that we've got to do life together and we were not created, especially within the tournament, because here's the thing, this is what happened. Now you correct me if I'm wrong, send me an email, Mike at epic life, com. Let me know what you think, but here's the thing. What happens is you, you're going to church, you're going to a typical Sunday church, and you discover, man, wait a minute, man, some of the stuff that's not being taught on Sundays does not match up to what I'm reading in this Bible, right? I mean, that's what happens. That's what's happened for every one of us. We all have our story, and I've talked about that before, but here's the thing. 
But what happens is they throw the baby out with the bathwater. Now, I know that's an old school joke. And if you're in another country, you may like, what? That simply means is that we throw out everything rather than just deal with the problem, right? And so the problem is since the church is rejecting, and I'm talking about Sunday churchgoers, they're rejecting Torah, they're rejecting most of the word, they're rejecting what Messiah came for, um, and we've kind of, you know, we, we've created a new a new Christianity, basically. And so when people come to this, what happens is they throw the entire church experience completely out the door and go, you know what, I'm not going to church at all, because nine times out of ten, the people that are in those churches, the pastors, the leadership, right, come on now, they generally reject you, and they generally, like, I know people that are in our community right now that the deacons or the pastors or the, the associate pastor or, or even the entire community literally rejected the people, the family, because they came to Torah. They, they say things that are so off cord, man, it's so wrong, like, oh, you've rejected Jesus. Well, uh, um, and here's what happened. Some of that may be validated because here's what happened, right? When we come into Torah, we get so pumped up. We get so excited about this revelation, and we grab a hold of these doctrines that are out there, stuff that we've been talking about. We're going to talk more about it. But we grab a hold of these doctrines that are out there that are simply bad stuff. I mean, we've got guys out there that are teaching theologies that just have nothing to do with Yeshua, have nothing to do with Jesus. And it drives people crazy. And, it, and, and so, it, it, you know, the Hebrewic roots movement, I'm, I'm a big, I'm anti-Hebrewic roots, right? I'm like, well, why are you? Because the doctrines that a lot of those teachers teach, man, are off the hook. They're off the chain. They don't make sense. They don't align to Scripture. And they have nothing to do with salvation and the way we're supposed to be living out our life. That's the problem. Or the other thing is, is that there's this viewpoint that when you come into Torah and you come into understanding, especially as Gentiles, is that you got to do all things Jewish. And so now you've got to grow your hair out down the sides, right? And, and when you do the Oneg, like if you, if you do Oneg, which means to delight, delight in the Sabbath, and you got to break that bread or you got to have a Torah scroll and everybody's got to kiss it and take pictures with it and put their hands on it and all that stuff. All of that is tradition. And so you got to get rid of the tradition, right? But then what happens? What happens is we begin to mature and we begin to see really the fullness of what this is about. Now, we've talked about this in the last episode, I believe, that, you know, the traditions, they're not all bad. Um, but man, don't do it for the sake of the traditions. Do it for the sake of Messiah, right? This is what we're doing. It all comes back to Jesus. And so then you mature and you settle down. I did the same thing. And you begin to actually see what the word says. And you begin to realize, okay, a lot of that tradition, a lot of that's just because they're Jew the Jewish folks are, are doing these certain things that are traditional and, and that the oral Torah talks about, but not the written Torah. You know what I mean? I mean, there's just so much of this. But what happens is we reject it all. We, we reject any type of community. We reject any kind of authority because we think it's all bad. It's all evil. Don't, don't go into a community like, right? We, we've, had a, we've had a family leave our community simply because we chose to do a different calendar that we're, we're honoring. We, we follow the Hallel calendar. Um, it was created for those that were dispersed. And so we find that it's better just to stay connected to that. We don't necessarily follow uh, other people have come up with their own calendars. And most of these guys are Gentiles who think they somehow have outsmarted all the, uh, you know, rabbis and Pharisees and all the Jewish people who've been doing it for thousands of years. You know, that just blows my mind. But I digress. And so what I want to tell you today is let's go back to what the Bible teaches, okay? And why it is important that you, if you have the opportunity to gather with a community of believers, then you are to do it. You're not to do it by yourself. You hear me? You're not to do it by yourself. So let's take a look here. I'm just looking in some pretty basic scriptures. Most of y'all know this stuff. Looking at Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. And, uh, Let's look at, let's see where this is at here, right? Verse, uh, let's just go with verse 19. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have boldness. I'm going to go ahead and pop that up here. Let's go ahead and go Hebrews chapter 10. 
And we're going to start, let's actually start in, let's, let's begin in verse 22. And so let me see if I can share this with you guys. I hope I'm able to do that. So y'all don't make fun of me, okay? I'm learning here how to do all this stuff here. Okay, let me go. Where are we at here? Oh, there we are. All right, here we go. Y'all ready? Here we go. We're going to share it. I'm learning how to do this. Um, oops, not there. Where did it go? Hmm. Not let me share it that way. All right, let me go. Cancel. It's not let me do that. Why is it not let me do that? So let's see if I can do it again. Not a presentation. Why won't it let me do that? Let me go window. Ah, there we go. I found it. I'm sorry. It took me a second. I'm a little slow. All right, here we go. So now that we're looking at it, says, let's, let's start in verse 22, right? It says, so let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with heart sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and a body washed with pure water. Talking about the immersion, right? Verse 23, let us hold fast the unwavering confession of hope for we, for he who had promised is faithful. Talking about Messiah. And let us consider, watch, how to stir up one another to love and good deeds. That's That really is the ultimate goal of us as followers, right? We should be stirring each other up. And instead, we have all these debates going on. And do not, verse 25, this is so important. Do not neglect our own meetings as is, is the habit of some. But encourage one another, this tree of life version, but encourage one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching, what are we talking about? We're talking about the day, this, this refers to the day of judgment and talking about the return of Yeshua. He says, so as we know, as especially Torah followers, right? As we know, we're living so close to the end times. And we look out in our communities. We look at all the things that are trying to be redefined from marriage to the, the you know, male, female, all that stuff's being redefined. What's happening? And we know we're coming close, but what are people doing? They're running and saying, oh, I'm not going to meet. I'm not going to gather. I've got my two families or whatever, but you can't do that. Right. But if we keep on sinning, now he goes on to sinning with willfully. We've received the knowledge of the truth. There no longer remains the sacrifice of sins, but only a terrifying expectation of judgment and a fiery fury, fury of fire about to devour the enemies of God. Anyways, so going right here, this is what's so important right here is this text. Do not neglect our own meetings, as is the habit of some. Literal translation, do not forsake the gathering together as some. Right. But do what? That as you see the day approach, as you see the day approach, man, we are to do it even more. As we know that the day of judgment is coming. And, and I, you know, I challenged our congregation a few weeks back to just say, you know what? If we really believe this, if we really believe Yeshua is coming back and you tore people that are in your homes and you're not. Now, listen, I understand that there are communities out there that's, that, that, that are not very healthy. And you may be, that may be the reason why you go, hey, you know what? We're stepping back from gathering in a bigger community simply because there's not one, there's not one close by. That's a whole different story. Now we can go and talk about that because I was talking with a brother today. And the problem with this is when you begin the community alone, and I know we've seen people in our church, we know it. Some of you that are here, you can make a comment on this because you know what I'm talking about. And that is, man, you're in a smaller, maybe a home community, but you're rejecting, you're rejecting authority. You're rejecting authority. You're rejecting any pastor. You're rejecting any eldership. You're rejecting any of that. Well, here's the problem. That's not the way the church was designed. Even if you are only three or four people or four, three or four families that are meeting in your homes, that's not healthy. We were not called to completely to be a, a, a isolationist, where we just isolate ourselves from the world. Matter of fact, the opposite opposite's true, right? Yeshua sent them into the world. He sent disciples. Why? To reach them. And so when we, if you're going to develop a community in your home, then it has to have the, the spiritual authority in which the Bible teaches. Otherwise, it is unhealthy. And you will be led astray. The Bible says you'll be, you'll be sheep without a shepherd. You need shepherds to lead you. Why? Because that's what the Bible teaches. That's what the Bible teaches. We are commanded as, as followers to submit to spiritual authorities. 
And if you're in a community that's rejecting eldership, rejecting pastors, and, and I know there are movements out there that all they do is talk bad about pastors and all they're doing is talking about churches. And I get it. I understand why, but, but you've got, we've got to guard ourselves to go, wait a minute, that may not be healthy over here, but I can create, oh, I can create a healthy, a healthy environment where I'm at. And if you do have access to a community, you need to take your family and be a part of that community. Why invent the, reinvent the wheel? Why reinvent something when there's already a healthy, and I'm talking about healthy communities that are led by pastors and elders that have uh, an understanding of letting people operate in their gifts and their callings and their abilities. You need to be a part of that. You're not called to be isolated. Now, I'm only talking to those people that who are going to do home church. They're doing home church because there's not, they don't have a safe environment to go to. But even in that, you must do it biblically. Now, here's another thing you can do. I was just talking to somebody about this. This is probably going to come out even more later, is that if that's you and you're, you're, maybe you're too far away, you're, you know, I think, man, if you can drive a couple of hours, and I know that because in our community, we have people that drive two, two and a half, sometimes four hours to get here. And so I think if you're within, you know, three and a half, four hours of a community, you can drive there. It's an all day deal. So the Sabbath should be an all day affair, right? And it's a blessing. You will be blessed by being able to use your gift in another, in a community. So don't, don't neglect that, right? Don't neglect that. Now, here's, here's my point is that if you can't do that, then what are you to do? What do you do if you're, if it's too long of a drive to get to a community and spend Sabbath with them, right? Then here's what you do. Then you call up the nearest community that it is. It may be six, eight, 10, 12 hours away from you. And you call them up and you talk to the elders, you talk to that pastor say, hey, we want to do a community in our home. It's too far for us to drive. We have a few followers in this area, but we want to submit to your authority until we can develop our own spiritual authority. When you do that, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, follower. You are going to experience the blessing of Yahweh in your life. You hear me? You will experience the blessing because you were not created. I was not created to do this by myself. The Lord just reminded me of something. I want to take over to there real quick. Give me a second. And let's take a look at this here. Leave. Let's see if I can find this real quick. Let me find this passage real quick, and then I'll share it with you guys real quick, okay? All right. There it is, 1 Corinthians. So let's look at this. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again with you all. And I want, to, I want you to take a look at this. How awesome is this, right? All right, let's take a look. Let's, uh, all right, let's take a look here. Now, look here. This is 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12 and looking at verse 21. And let's go all the way. We're going to read all of this. I'm going to go ahead and highlight it for you so we can take a look at it. Watch this. It says, oh, I lost it. Where to go? All right, here we go. I'm getting it all up there. This is just the way it works. It's just a interesting program. All right, so we go. Let's actually read. Let's actually begin right up here. Let's begin right here. Okay. Let's 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 do that. Let's begin right here. So it says, "For the body is not one part." Nice. But what? But many. If the foot says, since I am not a hand, I'm not part of the body, is it therefore not part of the body? And if the ear says, since I'm not an eye, I'm not part of the body, is it for this reason any less part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? And if the whole, if the whole body, basically, were hearing, what would the sense of smell be? But now God, Yahweh, has placed the parts, each of them, in the body, just as he desired. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But now there are many parts, yet what? One body. The eye cannot tell the hand. Watch, this is so important what we're talking about. The eye cannot, cannot tell the hand, I don't need you. Or in turn, the head to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary. Those parts of the body that seem to be less important are indispensable. And those parts of the body that we think to be less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty. But 
Our presentable parts have no such need. Rather, Yahweh assembled the body, giving more honor to those who are lacking, so that there may be no division in the body. Did you hear that? No division. But so that the parts may have the same care for one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer together. If one part is honored, all the parts rejoice together. Now you, listen to me, church, you are the body of Messiah and members individually. God has put into his community first the emissaries, right? These are the apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then healings, helps and leadership, various kinds of tongue. All are not apostles, are they? All are not prophets, are they? All are not teachers, are they? All do not work miracles, do they? All do not have the gifts of healing, do they? All do, all do not speak in tongues, do they? And all do not interpret, do they? But earnestly desire the gift, the greater gift. And we know, he says, I'll show you a greater way. And he goes into verse 13. What is my point? My point is, when, when you are, or we are, not a part of the body, we are doing a disservice to the body. Because regardless of where you are in this world, you are gifted by Yahweh. And the body lacks when you're not exercising that gift that's been given. And so whether your gift is leadership or whether your gift is preaching or teaching or whether your gift is praying for people or laying hands on people or whether your gift is being able to speak in tongues and decipher that and all that, it's a whole nother message. But whatever your gift is, you're supposed to be using it in the body of Yahweh. And when you don't gather together with other believers, and I'm not talking about your, your favorites, right? Just your three or four people. I'm talking about gathering in a way that creates a healthy community. And when you don't do that, you're lacking something. And every person that has come into our community, every person that has come in and said, you know what, man, uh, I have been missing this. Like I've even talked to people who watch us online and then come into the community live and in person. It is absolutely a game changer. And they'll tell you that. I mean, I know you're taking my word for it, but man, some of you know what I'm talking about. Go ahead and comment it down here in the comments if you're on YouTube and send me an email so I can read it and read it to the congregation if you agree. This is so important. We were called to do life together. And the enemy, the, one of the deceptions I believe that the enemy is moving today is that you don't need to go to church. Well, you just stay at home. I'm the church, and so I don't need the four walls. I understand what they're saying, and I, under, I agree to a certain point. But to reject everything because of something that's been mistaught or something that's been misused, I think is absolutely the wrong direction for us to go. So we need to gather together. And if you don't have a community that you can le that you can wrap into and bring your family to, look around. How close can you be and submit your family, submit your group of people that are meeting in your home to another authority until you can get to a place where you have healthy leaders, elders, pastors, right, and healthy teachers. These people, right, because there's so. This is how you get. This is how you get. This is how you guard against um, false teaching. Now, there's people out there, man, they're so wrapped up in stuff, man, just because they're listening to their, their pastors is the pastor of YouTube, right? And I don't mean like you don't watch YouTube, but that's, that's the only place they get their information. There's nobody there to hold them accountable to the teachings and the doctrines that they're learning. This is how the church got to the place there it was in first. Why? Well, if you go back historically, why, how did we end up here? Well, think about it. For hundreds of years, I'm going to use the Catholic Church for a minute, and that might be you. The Catholic Church, there was only, it was only the high, the people up on the food chain, right, who could read, who could write. So everybody else, the common people, would just have to trust that whatever they were reading was the truth. And so great deception happened. Like, I mean, you go back over into, say, even, even into the Messiah's time, not everybody knew how to read the Bible. Nobody, not everybody knew how to read, right? That didn't come around until probably the third, fourth, fifth century where education became and people began to read for themselves. 
And, and now we live in a world of technology. We live in a, an era that, that even people who don't study the scriptures enough, who, who don't, and, and maybe even have, um, you know, maybe even have some type of perverted want of drawing people to them instead of Messiah, they can tell you anything and even probably, you know, manipulate the scriptures enough so that it, they can deceive people. But back then, I mean, you had to trust that when the Catholic priest or whoever they were, the, you know, even the rabbi would get up there and they read, they read text, right? And because you couldn't read, you just had to trust that these guys had your best interest in mind. And it just, it just continued to happen. And so now we're, we're in the, I think we're, that's one of the reasons why we're in the conditions that we're in today is because we've, we don't do this. And so now we have YouTube and we've got all sorts of the internet and we're able to, I mean, you're watching me on the internet, obviously, but I'm going to tell you that, that just listening to me and me teach a passage of scripture and look at a couple of texts, man, I, I appreciate you being here and I appreciate you doing these things. But just like I tell our congregation, man, Paul told Timothy, study to show yourself approved. But then Paul says, man, in Ephesians, let me go up, let's go look at it. Let me make sure I find the right verse here. Um, yeah, let's go here. Let me go up. Let me open this up here. And let's look at, oh, I need to open it up first. Let me go here first and look at it. Now I'm going to go ahead and share it. All right, let's go look at it here. Um, is it there? Is that it? Let me see here. I think I went too far. Let's see here. There we go. Look at this. Talking about unity in the body of Messiah, right? Look at that. Verse 3, Ephesians. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called in one body of your call, one Lord, one faith, one immersion, one God, one Father of all who is over all. Right? So I want to look at this. Okay, here we go. Look. Verse 9. Now what does he what now what does he went up mean, except that he first went down to the lower regions of the earth? The one who came down in the same one who went up far above all the heavens in order to fulfill all things. That's Yeshua. But watch verse 11. Listen to this. This is verse 11. He himself, who Yeshua gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some as proclaimers of the good news, evangelists, and some as shepherds, pastors, and teachers to what? To equip the Kedoshim, the disciples, for the work of service, for building up the body of Messiah. And watch. This will continue until we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of Ben Elohim to a mature adulthood, to the measure of the stature of Messiah's fullness. Right? So he says, look, he gave, who did he give? He gave apostles. He gave pastors. He gave evangelists and teachers. He gave gifted people to do what? To equip the body, to build up the body of Messiah. And when you're at home and you go, well, I don't need those people. I don't need no elders. I don't need no, I can do it myself, right? Well, if you're not called to operate in that gifting, now you're in a problem. Now you're in a pickle, right? And so the Lord has given that to the community to do what? To help build up the body. I tell our church this all the time. I cannot do what I do by myself. I'm just, I'm a pastor, okay? And I know I'm, I'm called to be a pastor, but here's the thing. I'm not called to do it by myself. I can't do everything that needs to be done in the body, right? Because I'm not a, I may be a hand, right? But I'm not a foot. I'm not a leg, right? I'm not an arm. I'm just a hand. I may be just an eyeball, right? And that's all I am. So I need the fullness of the body. I need everybody. I need every part. I need your part, whatever your part is. The body lacks when we don't operate in our gifting. The body lacks from becoming everything that it's created to be. And I believe that's one of the reasons we have the community that we have here in Texas. Because, we're, man, the, the gifting that is in this, in the body of Messiah and the understanding that people realize, man, that that, you know, it, this isn't Pastor Mike's job. I just happen to be the, the guy that, that, that has to make the final call. You know what I mean? I mean, that's really comes down. There has to be that person, right? That's just my, my role as pastor. But I also have three other men. I have three other elders that I can lean on that can teach, 
according to scripture that an elder must have other elders and some of them are teachers and some of them are preachers and some of them are better in the historical uh, gathering of the information, right? We have others in our community, man, that do construction and, and they're amazing, man. They're so gifted. We have others that, that sing and play music and they're amazing. I can't do that. We need everybody. We got some in here that understand the Hebrew language so well, and, and I can go to them and go, hey, man, what does this mean? Do you understand? This? Because I don't understand all the Hebrew language and all the Greek and all that stuff. And then we got others, man, and what, in my opinion, are the greatest, right? We got the greats. We got those that behind the scenes, nobody sees them doing what they do. What is what? What are they? They may be serving. They may be. Um, they may be just cleaning up after someone or or setting out a chair. I mean, we got we got young people in this community that as soon as Oneg starts, man, they are they're running into the uh, closet and they're pulling out tables and putting chairs up. It's just an absolute amazing thing to sit there and watch. We've got ladies in our church that are so gifted with the gift of encouragement. We got ladies here that know how to teach other ladies doing what the Bible teaches. It is absolute amazing. We have so what my point is this that you may be off somewhere all by yourself trying to figure this thing out, man. And look, you don't have to. You don't have to. Become find you a Torah community. Find you a community that you can be a part of. And again, if you don't have someone that you can, you don't, you're not close enough to go to someone and be a part of a, 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 physically be a part of a community, then what you need to do is find a community that you like, man. Man, we're one of them. Man, I would love to talk to you. I would love to see where you're from and, 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 and begin to walk this journey with you. And so are our elders that are here. But me, you go, you know what, Mike, you're just not my cup of tea. I'm not, a, man, I, I can tell you there's a, there's a guy in, in Oklahoma, man. He didn't even pay me to do this, but Lex Meyer, man, look up Grafted Church right up there in Oklahoma. Great, a great guy, great community over there. And look up Daniel Joseph from Corner Fringe uh, in um, 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 Minnesota, right? Coon Rapids, Minnesota. Go talk, go look at him, right? And then they're starting a new plant called uh, up there in Iowa, man. Michael Sutcliffe, man. Look him up. Dude, I'm telling you, there are so many healthy communities right now that are just hungry to, they want to bring you in. And not for the sake of bringing you in to like add to the number, but because we care about the body of Messiah. We want you to be healthy. We want you to experience the life that Yahweh has for you. And you weren't going to, you're not going to create that life on your own. I know I still got this thing up here and I don't even know what that looks like. So, because I have it up on my screen. So pardon me that I didn't have that up. If I did have that up the whole time. All right, man, I'm rambling, aren't I? No, I'm not. I just, we really love to see um, Yahweh bless you and Yahweh do something in your life. We really do. So find you a community, be a part of it. If you need a community, if you want to, you want to come and check Epic Life out, man, check out our YouTube page. If you've not Epic Life Terrell, just look that up, Epic Life Terrell. You can also at 1030 every Sabbath morning, Central Standard Time here in Texas, you can go to elc.online.church. That's E-L-C dot online dot church register put in your information and then begin to be a part of that community our online community that way send me an email let me know hey you know what i need accountability i need uh, mike i have a small group of i've got three or four families we're meeting together we want to meet with we want we want some authority until we can develop our own man send me an email at mike m-i-k-e at epiclifetarot.com. And again, you can reach out to any of those other ministries that I've shared with you, man, because these guys are people that I trust. All right. And, and there may be a community close to you. And so whatever it is, man, don't do it alone. We were not designed to do life alone. We weren't. You're part of the body. You are gifted. You are gifted. So don't don't do it alone. You're not supposed to do it. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Very short teaching today, man. I hope you enjoy everything that we're trying to put out, man. And I just want to share with you, man, that you are loved. We're, we're, here's to you. This has been another Sunday Sabbath. We'll see you soon. God bless you.